Hi, this is Scotty Elkon with Selig Film News here with Dallas International Film Festival and the awesome team behind Bomb City. Guys, if you'll introduce yourselves. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, I'm Jameson Brooks. I am uh, the co-writer and director of Bomb City. Uh, Sheldon Chick. I'm uh, also a co-writer and a producer. Major Dodge. I'm the producer and casting director and I play Officer Denny. Isaiah Laborde. Produced this with these guys and uh, played Jack Hamilton, the prosecuting attorney. So, you guys, as far as the case itself, you guys were young teens when this came out. So, tell me about the fruition of like getting to the point where, from that to maybe Major can step in with Mark Colombo's party in 2012. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, Goes back that connect far. that, yeah. how that all happened, because this there is that whole long life to this incredible film. We've been working on it for about four years now, I would say. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been quite the roller coaster. And then we, we did, to start things off, yeah, we grew up in the town. And, and uh, we were familiar with the story from, from the get-go. And uh, I was 12, he was 15. Yeah. And uh, we just grew up always knowing the story and knowing the, you know, the, the all walks of life in the town. And the story just always resonated with us, like, in our hearts. And never would have thought we'd be the ones to tell it, you know what I mean? At least get it out there on the big screen. So it was kind of surreal, I guess, at, you know, at that time. What's your take on that? Um, it was, uh, like, kind of goes from, you know, we, we knew we wanted to make a feature film. You know, we, we kind of decided that we wanted to tell Brian's story. We started, you know, working on the script, kind of moved towards uh, meeting, some, you know, the Denikis and talking to them. And about that same time, uh, you know, we had we'd known Major a little bit around the, you know, Dallas is not as, you know, the filmmaking community is small. So we had known Major a little bit. But at Columbo's party, that's whenever, you know, he kind of told us, hey, Major, you know, y'all should work together on this film. And then, you know, from there, we just kind of took off running as a team. Christmas gift, if you will. That was yeah. a Christmas party, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Major, it, was a great part. it was a great party. There was actually <laughs> wrestling matches up in the yeah. floor, Mark and another <laughs> offensive lineman. And then Mark was yelling. I wrestled in college, so it was, Mark was yelling for me to come help him. It was pretty funny. <laughs> what was it like, the transition, though, when you guys decided, like, Major, you might want to talk about this, bringing it to Dallas, shooting here, I mean, Rockwell, you guys got to shoot a lot. Local. Yeah, well, you know, when you're when you're making an independent film, obviously every penny matters. And so, you know, we wanted to, um, you know, shoot it somewhere that, that could capture the story because Amarillo is a, not all Texas looks alike. Amarillo is very different um, compared to Dallas as far as the landscape. Um, and, um, you know, we... It's a we, hard cheat. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a hard <laughs> cheat, you know. I mean, it's called Amarillo, which means yellow, so obviously it looks different, you know. But, um, you know, we, we, we did some location scouting uh, in Amarillo because we were going back and forth getting, you know, the, the life rights and getting the blessings from all the real people. And every time we'd go down there to meet with somebody, researching the story and to get the rights, we would also location scout. And we'd go around, and we found some places we liked. But, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, from my, what I remember, the deciding factor was finding the bomb city location yeah there's a place in in um over in the cedars called corinth park and um uh, herschel weisfeld who we pay homage to in the film we actually named that character after herschel um this place we drove by it and had the phone number spray painted it's you know for more information outside because it had this big courtyard and we looked in there was all this graffiti and everything and we called the number and we met herschel and you know probably 30, 40% of the movie, I'd say, takes yeah. place in that one location. So finding that and knowing, you know, almost half of the movie is gonna take place here at Bomb City was kind of the, you know, the deciding factor. Yeah. That and then, you know, with the crew all being from Dallas, you know, 20 of our 30 actors are from Dallas and, uh, and then all of us living in Dallas, it was the most uh, cost effective yeah. thing to do. Exactly. But we did go to Amarillo for three days to capture those iconic landmarks like the Cadillac Ranch and whatnot. And you guys did, Jake told me y'all y'all did that aerial shot of like the... Sign graveyard? Sign graveyard, yeah. which is yeah. wonderful in the film. Yeah, yeah. It's, that, that was kind of a... You know, Jamie said something last night which was really cool. And, um, and we've always talked about having a punk rock angel, mm -hmm. which was actually... There's a, a, a famous photograph um, with Brian in front of a sign that says Punk Rock Angel mm -hmm. and it has an, a, a, an angel with a green mohawk. It's a sign that he made. Yeah, so that he, he made, made with yeah. a halo yeah. over him. And so we've always said we had a punk rock angel, um, you know, helping us. So um, we were headed to Amarillo and we had tried and tried and tried. And one of our executive producers here in town happened to know the Marsh family and put me in contact with Stanley Marsh Jr. So I was talking to him directly and, um, you know, it was just hard to work it out. And I had liked a photo on Instagram. Um, of um, an aerial of a drone shot and it was called uh, Aerial Amarillo 
mm-hmm. and I liked the photo. And this guy sent me a message because he saw that I was a filmmaker. His name was Brian Brumley. And Brian uh, told me, hey, I'm the, the groundskeeper for Toad Hall. If you guys want to shoot here. I said, absolutely, we want to shoot here. I've been trying to talk to Stanley, and it's hard to get, to get things worked out. <clears throat> and that all happened through Instagram. And so Brian got us on the property. So what I'm saying is, is that little things like that, fortuitous things happened. And, yeah. and we know it's because we had a punk rock angel. Well, to kind of get back to the family a little bit, for you guys, um, what was it like being able to have the parents come on board and really back this film? Because I think that's obviously a huge deal, and, and Brian's yeah, brother. Most important, yeah. honestly. We, I mean, whenever we approached them, if we would approach them and said, hey, you know, please let us tell your son's story, uh, if they would have said no, we, we wouldn't we'd have done it. Done, yeah. Just because, I mean, you, know, it's, you don't tread there, you know, but just to have their blessing and their support, and all of Brian's family and friends, like that, that's why we did it. You know what I mean? Like, we don't really care about the rest of the stuff. We just want to just share the story, get it out there, try to inspire others, and, and just get Brian's story out there to the masses. And it, I mean, it's already been out there, it's been widely syndicated since like the 90s. Mm. But just to get it out there and let you actually experience life with Brian, you know, kind of a different perspective, and then hopefully just pay tribute and kind of let his friends and family spend a little bit of time with him too and kind of bring him back for a little bit you know, longer. Can you talk about the casting then and, and fitting people? Because I think, obviously for, for well, this, this wonderful fellow here, um, like he sent you guys a video from like Hollywood of him doing his own you know, hair and all that. The, the coolest, I think, audition tape. Well, it's, it's funny cause <laughs> yeah. that, that Isaiah's here with us because, um, so Isaiah and Dave were friends. Isaiah's one of my best friends. He's also you know produced several films. and. Uh, <clears throat> we're, we're looking for this part. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was the casting director. We did this backwards. <clears throat> Most films, they cast the lead actor first, and then you cast everyone around. Your supporting cast based off your lead actor. Dave was the last actor we cast because of... We, 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 because of the importance. The yeah, important, we the couldn't. Importance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we had in our... We, we just ha- couldn't, yeah. Yeah, we had in our mind, you know, all the, you know, it just, he just had to be perfect because it was Brian. Yeah. And then when you look at it from an actor standpoint, you had to find an actor not only that could act well, we needed an actor that could skateboard. We needed an actor that could pull off looking somewhat like Brian. And we needed an actor willing to take a green mohawk. Yeah. Like, so you got four big things there, and you're like, who are we going to get to do this? And Isaiah said, you got to see Dave Davis. And I'm telling you, he's perfect for it. And I'd even talked to because a casting director friend, Ryan Glorioso. I called him up, and we had some conversations. He's out of Louisiana. And he's like, oh, yeah, Dave's great. Dave's great. You should see him. And so anyway, I told Isaiah, I was like, send him a tape. And... Um, you know, Jamie and uh, I loved him. Jamie and Shelm was like, no, he's too old. You know, it's like, <laughs> or didn't you know, look exactly. No, no, it didn't but, look no. like Brian. But, but and that was before the Mohawk. Yeah, no, 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 before before that, but, no. but yeah, what he was doing, what he's bringing it, it was all about spirit at that point. He had too. the spirit, and he had the spirit of, and that's what we. You know, yeah, it, I think yeah. it all just came. Together. Genuine, that, that was my. Yeah, that was yeah. my standpoint. That was Mark. It's like he ca- captures the essence. Yeah, he can act. He's available. It was the best audition. And his uh, audition was amazing. Yeah, he was skating on a half pipe and. Like yeah. he basically, throwing yeah, he, he skates in, awesome you know, shape. he does the half pipe, skates in, lands, yeah. does the lines. You know, he had that laugh. The skateboard. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I want to go back to the friends and family question that you said right before and just touch on that because uh, this was the most surreal, unbelievable experience having, starting the very first day we had the punk rock scene at, at, uh, at, um, at the Bomb City location and we were jamming and we had real friends and real family and it was scary and it was, it was just the most emotionally charging, on edge, wondering if you're doing things right. I mean, I know that that's yeah. been that's been the concern the whole time from from day one until now. You know, we wanted to instill the it, same fear that we had telling the story yeah. to everybody. But it brought so much energy and the emotions, and and we're able to get it as correct as we possibly could by having those being able to talk to people that were that close to Brian and family and friends. Yeah. Um, so we also they actually make cameos in the film. I don't know yeah. if, I don't know if anyone notices that, but yeah, you actually see a lot of Brian's yeah. best friends. And yeah, some brothers. three of them. Yeah. Yeah. We also did that backwards. We started with one of the most epic, the biggest scenes of the film on day one. We had, on day one, we had 80 extras. Like, that's not how you yeah. make a movie yeah. usually, <laughs> you know? So we, 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 everything was, was punk rock, you know? So I'm so. Well, to kind of, the other side of the film is, what I thought was really great was y'all captured the, the trial. And, and specifically, you know, the, the way Glenn's character, especially, I think he, oh, what a, what oh, a performance. So powerful. Yeah. Um, can y'all talk about that side of things and the impact of showcasing, very similarly, we have a film that also does the Rodney King riots, and very similarly, that way that people are portrayed after a trial is so 
damning to yep. those people and especially Brian. Was it nice to showcase that in a way that says this was done wrong? You know, he himself was was done wrong in the way he was portrayed and how, you know, bringing up his, his jacket and everything. Uh, that, that was really emotional watching that stuff. Yeah. Um, I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, I think, well, I try not to give, give away too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, the, we, obviously Brian was, you know, he, he was kind of put on trial it's weird because Brian seemed like, it seemed like Brian was on trial. If that, and and he, it was his murder. You know, someone had murdered him or killed him. And uh, we always wanted to kind of put the viewer in a position, you know, early on we wanted to show the court early on. So you kind of don't know what the trial is about when you start seeing it. And we wanted to put the viewer in a position almost to judge Brian a little bit, you know, to, to like see if they can shred all that bias too. Because we wanted, we, we, you know, we kind of attacked the bias of the language and all that stuff, we wanted to put that in there. The true punk, you know, and is that, does that make you guilty or not guilty of, you know, and if you, if, to me, the ultimate question about the trial and everything is um, if the tables were turned, if Brian was driving that car and he ran someone over, you know, who's, would he have been guilty of that? That, that question was actually asked if, you know, doing our research, we went back and watched the 2020 episode, 2020 downtown, mm -hmm. um, at, with Elizabeth Vargas and Elizabeth, Warren Clark, the real attorney, Elizabeth Vargas asked him point blank, sitting across from, towards the end of the interview, she says, if the tables had been turned and a football player had been killed, would the outcome have been different? He goes, oh, absolutely. And she goes, really? Why is that? And, and he goes, because appearance matters. And she goes, Elizabeth, there's the look in her face. She goes, what? He goes, appearance matters. Mm. It matters in Amarillo, Texas, and it matters in New York City. And she was like, and that just stuck with me. I was like, it shouldn't, you know? It shouldn't, you yeah. shouldn't be judged you shouldn't judge a book based on its cover, yeah. you know? And, you know, with Jamie's direction, just to touch on that last question, um, if you go in as a blind audience member, the whole time until the end, it's set up, it's, it's been edited and directed. You, you think... That they're gonna do something to the preps, yeah. That's what you think. So if you don't know the story, you're gonna, the way it's edited and, and, and put together... Well, thanks for giving everything away. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like, without giving too much away. <laughs> Well, I guess kind of lastly to let you guys tell where, you know, more people can find out about this incredible film and, and where you guys are going from here. Tell us a little bit about the sites and, and just what you guys are able to do, you know, from here. We just wanted to spread the word, um, hopefully go overseas. I think maybe hit some spots that Brian would have liked to, you know, visit and travel to and, and spread the word among those communities. And, and uh, we're hitting Nashville. Yeah. Um, Nashville, next. Well, Nashville Film Festival is next April 20th, the festival starts. So we play weeks. April 23rd at 8 p.m. and April 25th at 7.30 p.m. in Nashville as part of the Nashville Film Festival. And our goal, we're already having conversations. Our goal is obviously to get distribution and get this thing out uh, nationwide and then worldwide. And bombcityfilm.com uh, and Facebook at Bomb City Film. Uh, and Instagram at Bomb yeah, City Film. And Twitter. So. Well, definitely, guys, it's, it's been really special for Diff to be able to make this the world premiere and to make this the homecoming. And even though, uh, you know, Amarillo isn't, you know, close in, in distance, it's, you know, being able to bring the family especially. This has been really yeah, cool. That was a blessing for it, us. Diff has been, been Diff, amazing yeah. to us, too. This has been a, such a cool experience, <clears throat> yeah. and we're so happy to be here and, and have all the, everyone that worked on the film, and just they're here, and it's awesome. So we've had a really good time. Awesome, guys, thanks, and thanks. Uh, I can't wait to see cool. more people see this. Awesome. Yeah, thank you.